In this video, we will see how to fade a widget. We'll do multiple examples, simple ones but also more complex ones, while also looking at easing equations. Hello and welcome to this How to Touch GFX video. My name is Gaetan, and today we will see how to fade your widgets and how to set their alpha value to modify their transparency. Here are the results that we will achieve in this video. Fading the star during its animation, fading the pine cone after its animation, and fading in and out the sky when going from day to night and from night to day. For the first method, we will fade the star by using the built-in interaction inside Designer. In the second method, we will fade the pine cone by using the fade animator mixing from within the code. And for the final method, we'll modify the alpha value of the sky every frame by using the set alpha method inside the handle tick event function. The simplest way to smoothly fade a widget is to use an interaction. It allows for a quick design but with limited features. For most designs, it is the best solution. We will start this video by taking the GUI that we created in the previous video move widget. This way we already have the star image that we want to fade and we already have the flex button one that we use as a trigger. We want the star widget to start fading before the end of its movement so let's create a new interaction. The trigger is button clicked, flex button one. The action is fade widget, star image. We want to fade to full transparency so we keep the alpha value to zero. Let's also add an easing equation. And the movement lasts for 1000 milliseconds. So we will start the fade at uh, 600 milliseconds and we'll make it last for 400 milliseconds. Let's see the results. It's perfect except that it only works once. So let's fix this by putting the alpha value back to 255 once it reaches zero. To do so, we will check can trigger another interaction. We will create a new interaction. This time the trigger will be another interaction is finished. We will select the interaction we previously created. The action will be to fade a widget, the star image, and this time we'll put the alpha value to 255. The rest can be left as it is and it will be perfect. Now we can see our shooting star as much as we want. With interaction, our shooting star looks even more realistic without having to code anything and very quickly. Interaction are truly a great tool if you know how to use them. Using an interaction to fade a widget creates fade animator, which means we can use it in code. Let's use one to fade the pinecone image after it fell. To use the fade animator, we need to enable the mixing for that specific widget. Now let's generate code and jump into the code. In generated, GUI generated, source, screen one and screen one of your base. Here we see the function for the animation. We see the fade animator. So let's copy it and paste it in the function pinecone. We want to change the name of the images. And now we see the delay here. We want the fade to start at the end of the movement. The movement lasts for 60 ticks. So we'll put the delay at 60 ticks as well. For the fade animator itself, the first parameter is the alpha value. Then is the duration. And finally, the easing equation. We want the final alpha value to be zero, to be completely invisible. So we keep it as it is. The duration, we'll put it at 30 ticks, so half a second, and we keep the easing equation as it is. Let's run it. The pine cone fades as expected. Now let's make it loop. Instead of setting the pine cone visible, we'll just move it back to its original position using the move to method. Also, 
we will set its alpha value to 255 so it is visible. In designer, we want to make the pine cone visible, but change its alpha value to zero to make it invisible. Let's see the result. Now it can loop. A fade animator can be used if you want to animate your widget in the code. Here it is the best solution because we already have an interaction calling a function when the button is clicked. In this last technique, we will see how to get full control of the fade animation by using the set alpha method inside the handle seek event function. Previously, we changed the sky without any transition. This time, we will fade in and out the sky to make a clean transition between night and day. First, inside designer, we will remove the container that we do not use anymore. We'll keep the day image, the day sky, and the night sky. Now, if we change the alpha value of the day sky, we can reveal the night sky. So that's all we'll have to change in the code. Speaking of code, let's jump into it. Let's start by removing the two abrupt transition using the set visible method. Instead, we will use the set alpha method, which value can range from 0 to 255. But 255 ticks is too long, it's almost 5 seconds. So let's try to get that full transition in half the time. So the max value of 127 should get the max alpha value. To do so, we'll create two new transitions. One when the counter is between 0 and 127. So the condition is the counter is less than 127. And the second condition is when the team counter is between 360 and 487. This first transition is when we want to put the sky night visible. So we want to decrease the day sky alpha value. The second transition is when we want to set the day sky visible, so increase its alpha value. So we'll take our day sky image, set alpha, and we want to increase it, so we'll just put tick counter. But we also have to multiply it by 2, because the tick counter only goes up to 127. Now we have to invalidate, and that's all for this transition. For the second one, it's a bit different because we want to decrease, so we take the maximum value to which we remove the tick counter value. This way, we get a decreasing order from 127 to 0. 487 minus tick counter. And let's not forget to multiply it by 2. And we invalidate as well. Now let's run the code and see the result. The day to night transition and night to day transition is way smoother. With the handle tick event function and the set alpha method, you can really do anything you want. In this video, we have seen three ways to fade a widget. First, we use the built-in interaction to get a quick animation. Then we use the fade animator mixing to be able to put our animation inside our code. And finally, we use the set alpha method inside the handle tick event function to get full control of our transparency. If you want to keep learning, you can check our documentation, our API, and our tutorials on our website please find the link in the description. Also, you can check our other videos on this playlist where we talk about various subjects. Finally, if you have a specific question about your project, you can ask it on the ST forum. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next one.